Hey guys, what's up? It's Gibbs here and welcome back to another video in the tactical series I'm doing. This is the Bundesliga tactical series and we are back at Borussia Dortmund for the second time this football manager in this series and we have a new tactic for you. If you follow German football at all or, Bin or Borussia Dortmund, you'll know that they no longer play in that 4-2-3-1 that we've been so accustomed to seeing them using under different managers because of the strength the players have got in each position. They are now using a 3-4-3 variant with, you know, a lot of focus on getting the top man, Erling Haaland, in as many as they can. Now, I haven't done as well with getting Erling Haaland in the goals this save, and there has been some issues with it because of how FM this year reads the 3-4-3, but I think, you know, especially the fact that this is in a new match engine compared to my other tactic, that it's certainly a lot different. There's some different aspects to it. It's almost the exact same style because, you know, the philosophy hasn't changed. It's still that quick exchange, you know, long balls, you know, short passing through the, the channels. But the one thing I wanted to do was, that, as I say, exploit the channels. If you don't know what the channels are, they're, you know, vertical lines up and down the pitch that if we want to look at the tactic, kind of take every single one of these as a channel. You know... With Royce coming inside, you, and Guerrero sometimes comes inside, you have four players within one channel. And that's what he does really well. He overloads the channels, and if, you, you know, if you've watched any Pep Guardiola talks or anything like that, he certainly talks about one man or two men per channel. Whereas Favre, it's you know, exploiting the, the small spaces, the half spaces, and getting lots of players into them for quick transition. So, as you can see guys, this is the tactic, it is the, almost the exact same uh, as the normal one, except we've put it to slightly lower tempo rather than lower. Um, if you haven't watched that 4 to 3 one video, go and watch that, if you want to see that how that worked that one out first. I won't be talking too much about the tactic, more about the players this one. So, you know, you can see here, that's that's the style there hasn't been much change other than that tempo just because they were moving it far too quickly in the middle when there's only two players sitting in there and that wasn't really working so if we look you know you've got Burke and goals and then this three in front of them and the most important player here is Hummels similar to the Leipzig video we've just done Hummels as well as that you know deep line pivot you know previously Dortmund have used Witzel or Delaney in this space here to just provide a you know an outlay for the defenders and then he can turn and spread out wide or play it forward to an attacking midfielder. Since there's no longer that option there or there, Hummels becomes this deep line playmaker that is in the middle of defence essentially. As you see his passing is very good for a defender. There's a lot of defenders this game that are, obviously because of the you know the constant progression in modern football and the ball playing defender taking more and more importance in the modern game. Looking at the two wing backs, Guerrero, complete wing back, Hakimi, wing back attack. The reason for this is Guerrero does tend to drop into the middle sometimes. He'll you know drive up to Royce, cut inside, and he'll become almost a ten. And if you've watched the Bundesliga since it's come back from the break, I certainly have, as it's the only football on just now, you will see that Guerrero picks up a lot of spaces in here, creates goals, gets assists, you know, he's a really strong player for them. Whereas on the right side, Hakimi tends to drive in the outside of Sancho all the time. That's why I've got him in wing-back attack. You know, he's, he's very quick, as you can see, natural fitness 17, pace 18, acceleration 15. He's very quick, he can go up and down that line all day long and Sancho is much more suited in the kind of pockets here as, you know, he can be on the left but one thing that's been very successful for him is taking up this pocket just behind Haaland you know, using Haaland as two defenders pick him up he just drives into that space, shoots across goal and he's got a decent amount of goals doing that you know, six goals, six assists kind of leaning into how good he is at his goal creation you know, 12, 12 goal creations in you know, 25 games. So, Hakimi has been very good at doing that and allowing Sancho to come inside. As for the two in the middle, we have stuck with mainly Witzel and Emery Chan. Witzel provides some strength in the midfield, not just, you know, your, your passing and things like that. He is very good at that. You know, as you can see, his concentration and composure is very high. So, 
I noticed against teams like Leipzig and teams like Schalke who press you quite hard in this area virtually no problem in just turning a player and spraying a pass out to Royce or turning a player and playing Haaland over the top. So there was it was almost a no brainer for using him there. As for Emery Chan, I felt that, you know, with the midfielders available to me, you know, Delaney, De Hood, uh, arguably Reyna, Brandt maybe in this position, I felt like for a bit of balance in this midfield we were only having to especially how you watch how they play. A ball winning midfield of support was the best option because he wins the ball on support and then runs forward. He doesn't just, you know, lay it off like other ball player midfielders. You know, especially with his traits, you know, you can see there he's got really good physical, really good mental stats and, you know, he's really good at winning the ball in that area and driving forward into that 10 roll, leaving Vitzel to, you know, stay here as a pivot. As for the wingers, Royce and Sancho, there's not much I can say about them. They're inverted wingers. You know, I had thought about playing them as 10s because that's really how they play under Favre, kind of wider 10s. But, you know, the inverted winger works well, this FM, so I stuck with it and I had no complaints about how it's been used. You know, Royce, 6 goals, 11 assists. And, you know, Sancho, as you've seen, he's in 6 goals, 6 assists for the season so far. Royce does very well at, you know, keep holding the edge of the box here and just driving across and shooting or driving inwards and putting across. Sancho, very much the same, gets in along this byline or typically, you know, just nips inside and drives at the defence, laying off to Haaland or shooting himself. Now, talking about the big man, here is Erling Haaland, we all know him by now, you know, he's terrific, he really is something that I, I know a lot of us haven't seen in years, you know, this kind of young striker, you know, coming through in the fashion that he has and scoring the goals that he has, it's just been terrific to watch and you know as a neutral from this point of view you know I don't really support any team in Germany you know I, I was I was glad to see him go to Dortmund because of the type of of football they play I think if he was to go to Leipzig from Salzburg I think he would have missed out because Timo Werner is just on fire all the time and I think an attack with two of them would look good but I think Haaland is a sole striker and I think he's proved that since he's came to Dortmund so that is the players, you know, that it's what you could expect from going from a 4-2-3-1 to a 3-4-3. It's nothing special. It's It just works, I suppose is the way to put it. Um, using almost the same style as a custom Tiki Taka, um, you know, th as I've said, the main focus was using Lucien Favre's way of, you know, exploiting the spaces and we've certainly done that quite well. As you would have seen at the start, we did lose four games. We will go over them. Some of them were uh, holidayed through, and I wasn't expecting to lose them. But in terms of testing all the tactics that I am right now for the Bundesliga series, I was just trying to get through this one a bit quicker since I'd already done it. So, you know, it, it is a good tactic. The games that I've played, I've won. Um, but we'll look at the losses as well, just because to show you that even though I wasn't managing them, the stats are still kind of in our favour in a lot of aspects but what we'll do is we will just go and jump in and look at the competitions as you can see we are sitting top anyway uh, 13 wins 4 losses as you can see only one loss at home uh, the rest are away and you know it's strange I don't know but you know when I've been doing my test with Michalka I cannot get them playing this good so far and you know, I, obviously I'm trying to create a different style from the actual play in the game but Every save I've done this since the January update, it's in the 20.4.1 or whatever it was, then Schalke have been always, you know, first or second. It's really interesting. But they always kind of drop off towards the end and you'll see Bayern or Dortmund go and win the league. We are through to the knockout round of the Champions League and we are still in the Cup. We won the Super Cup at the very start of the season against Bayern with a 2-0 win, I think it was, maybe a 2-1. But yeah. Look at the schedule. As you can see, we'll go back to the very start of the season. You know, yeah, there was that 2 0 win over Bayern in the Super Cup, and from then on in, we, we, you know, no draws, just losses, sadly. But with some really big wins, you know, Man City, you know, beating Bayern 2 1, beat Leipzig, you know, so I think we beat, what was it, Bayern? Yeah, 3 1. So when you look at it like that, you can't complain. 
but we will just look at the losses to highlight because I know a lot of people come here for tactics that will just work um, and there's nothing wrong with that but I just want to show you that as much as this tactic is very strong going forward there are some issues in defence. So as you can see here away to Eintracht Frankfurt who also play in a 5 at the back that's one to keep an eye out on. Uh, they were very good, you know, they're very narrow, they overload the midfield and we did find some issues with that, especially, you know, with losing Royce that game wasn't great, but, you know, the middle of the midfield was just completely overloaded, you know, Sancho, as you can see, 6.4 rate and he wasn't getting the ball, so as much as it was a very even game, you know, no complaints with going down 1-0 to Frankfurt there. The Schalke away, as I've said, they're an anomaly this game. If you ask me, you know they've got they do have a very good team, but you know some of the performances they've been coming out with are just outstanding, and you know this one was no different. Taking lead in eight minutes, uh, and just keeping both teams at bay and really in shooting, uh, them dominating possession a little more was just very interesting to watch. But at the same time, you know losing that red card, and you know it was quite disappointing to see. But no complaint. Again, no complaints really. But, you know, there's nothing much you can do in that situation. So, looking on to the Wolfsburg one. Again, this is one of the ones that, you know, you just have to sit back and think, well, how has that happened? Well, of course, two goals in two minutes. And that was, they only had one more shot. If you've watched the uh, Leipzig video that I put up a couple of days ago, then you will know that, you know, coming up against teams and this kind of thing happening it's just it's just usual at this point you know I, I think it actually was Wolfsburg in that one as well I might be wrong but you know they had two shots on target when we've completely dominated the game and you know the strikers just can't do anything and it's just one of those and I think that's mainly that leans into the, the match engine more than anything and then Hoffenheim again very similar scenario so Again, can't complain too much. But that has been the tactic, guys. Again, here is the player stats. Erling Haaland in 21 goals at half-season mark. Very good point to be at. Uh, sadly, not at the 51, I think it was, that we were at at the time of mid-season in the 4-3-1. Uh, but you can see he's done very well. Guerrero with the 12 assists, but there's other players. You know, Royce thinks in 11, Sancho in 6. So we're getting a lot of goals, we're creating a lot of opportunities from different areas and we're overloading those half spaces and those channels, which is exactly what we look to do. So anyway guys, I'll be bringing out more Bundesliga tactics, probably looking at Bayern and Schalke next. Uh, I think I'd put on Twitter that I was going to be putting them out at the weekend, but the testing just didn't go well at first with them. So I'm going to look into them a bit more, maybe take it from a different approach. If not... Uh, it would be Leverkusen and Gladbach and then those are the only four tactics that are still to come out after I've done these two so anyway guys, I've been Keebs it's been great having you, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more tactics and I'll see you in the next one, cheers